According to NASA Ambassador, the Juno space probe has made an exciting discovery in Jupiter's orbit. The small spacecraft is said to have detected an FM radio signal coming from Ganymede, which is Jupiter's biggest moon. Welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Quick reminder, subscribing is free, linking the video helps YouTube suggest similar videos. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. For the first time, NASA's Juno probe has detected an FM radio transmission from Ganymede. Even though it is very unlikely that the signal was produced by extraterrestrial beings, the discovery still contributes to the advancement of scientific knowledge about the Moon's enormous size and weight, one that still holds many secrets, particularly in its salty underground waters. Due to the fact that it is the biggest of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede has long been a source of interest for astronomers. The Hubble Space Telescope, which is operated by NASA, discovered evidence that Ganymede possesses an underground ocean in the year 2015. Also, Juno has made a number of significant discoveries about Jupiter, including the capturing of amazing images that have never been seen before and an oval storm that has been described as Snow White. It is not the first time that scientists have found unusual phenomena on Ganymede. Still, this discovery is remarkable. In 2018, owing to the Galileo probe spacecraft, researchers were able to witness exceptional electromagnetic waves, also referred to as chorus waves. The spacecraft, which launched in 2011, was moving through Jupiter's polar zone at 111,847 miles per hour when it came across the radio source known as a decametric radio emission, or simply Wi-Fi. Even though it only caught a glimpse of the radio emission for five seconds, it was more than enough time to identify its point of origin. According to NASA, the decametric radio waves have frequencies ranging from 10 to 40 megahertz. However, such frequencies are never higher than 40. According to the space agency, electrons whirling about in Jupiter's magnetic field are assumed to be the source of the radio noise that we hear. When was Juno launched? In 2011, NASA launched an exploration vehicle into orbit that was given the name Juno. It was a part of the New Frontiers program run by NASA. NASA's program consists of a series of missions designed to explore our whole solar system and improve our knowledge of space. Why was Juno sent into space in the first place? The mission of the probe was to investigate Jupiter and learn more about the processes that led to its formation or how it has changed throughout the course of history. In 2016, it successfully reached Jupiter's orbit. According to the official website, Juno will observe Jupiter's gravity and magnetic fields, atmosphere dynamics and composition, and evolution. The spacecraft is equipped state-of-the-art technology. Juno acquired more than three terabits of scientific data and gave stunning pictures of Jupiter and its satellites during the main mission's 35 Jupiter orbits, all of which were analyzed by citizen scientists using NASA's first-ever camera devoted to public outreach. What are some of discoveries made by Juno? The many findings from Juno have changed our perception of Jupiter's atmosphere and interior, revealing a weather layer in Jupiter's atmosphere that reaches far beyond the planet's water clouds as well as a deep interior with a core composed of diluted heavy elements. As the spacecraft's orbit changed towards the end of the primary mission, flybys of the moon Ganymede triggered Juno's transformation into a complete Jovian system explorer. The FM waves were picked up coming from Ganymede, which is one of the 79 moons that orbit the gas giant. Surprisingly, this is the first time any signal or activity has been discovered from this moon. Although it is important to note that the radio waves in this instance do not come from any specific communication device, they should not be used as evidence that extraterrestrial life exists on Ganymede because of this fact. The spacecraft Juno was able to pick up this increased frequency when it was traveling through an area of Jupiter in which the magnetic field lines of Jupiter aligned with those of the moon Ganymede. Jupiter possesses the biggest and most powerful magnetic field of all the planets in our solar system. This field extends so far that some of the planet's moons orbit inside it, making it the most powerful magnetic field in our solar system. According to NASA, Io is caught in a gravitational tug of war with Jupiter and two other giant moons since it is closest to the planet. These opposing poles create huge amounts of heat inside the moon's interior, which has resulted in hundreds of volcanic eruptions throughout the surface of the moon. According to a statement issued by NASA, the volcanoes are responsible for the emission of one ton of gas and particles into space every single second. A portion of this material undergoes a process that causes it to break up into electrically charged ions and electrons, which are subsequently drawn to Jupiter by the magnetic field of the planet. Electrons captured in the magnetic field are driven toward Jupiter's poles, producing what astronomers call decameter radio waves along the route, also known as decametric radio emissions or DAM. Yasmina Martos, who works at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, stated in the statement that the WAVES instrument on Juno is able to pick up these radio waves when the spacecraft is in the optimal location to listen. 
Researchers were able to determine, with the help of data from Juno, exactly where the radio emissions originate inside Jupiter's vast magnetic field. The research gives information on the dynamics of the massive magnetic fields created by gas giants. The research group believes that the radio waves originate from a region in space that may be conceptualized as a hollow cone and that has the ideal combination of factors, namely the appropriate magnitude of the magnetic field and the appropriate number of electrons per unit of space. According to the statement released by NASA, the signal revolves like a lighthouse, and in order for Juno to pick up on it, the light has to be shining on the spacecraft. The radio data also showed that the electrons that produce these radio waves release a huge quantity of energy, 23 times more than the researchers anticipated they would do so. According to the study team, such electrons may also originate from other sources, such as the planet's magnetic field or solar wind. The data collected by Juno waves allowed the researchers to pinpoint the exact areas inside Jupiter's vast magnetic field that was responsible for the production of these radio waves. According to the research team, these specific places are ideal for the production of radio waves since they have an adequate level of magnetic field strength as well as an adequate level of electron density, i.e. neither too many nor too few. The team was able to calculate, with the use of data from Juno, that the energy of the electrons that were responsible for producing the radio waves was far larger than what had been expected in the past. Specifically, it was up to 23 times higher. Furthermore, the electrons do not have to originate from a volcanic moon. According to the scientists, one possible location for these particles is inside the magnetic field that surrounds the planet, known as the magnetosphere. But they also might have originated from the sun as part of the solar wind. Ganymede is the only natural satellite in the solar system that has its very own magnetic field. Therefore, researchers have long hypothesized that these radio waves would continue to exist in the area, but up until recently, they had no direct evidence to support their theory. The results have now been published in the scientific journal Geophysical Research Letters. Juno will continue its exploration of the solar system's biggest planet until September 2025, or until the spacecraft's end of life. This extension gives Juno the mission to become an explorer of the whole Jovian system, which includes Jupiter, Jupiter's rings, and Jupiter's moons. In addition, further rendezvous are planned for two of Jupiter's most fascinating moons, Europa and Io. There is an ocean on the moon Europa, which is the sixth largest moon in the solar system. This ocean has the potential to support life. In August of 2019, NASA announced that it will be sending a mission to Europa in order to do more research on the astronomical body. For those who aren't aware, Ganymede is the biggest moon of Jupiter and the largest moon in the whole solar system. It is also the biggest celestial body in the solar system that does not possess a considerable atmosphere. Ganymede is the ninth biggest object in the solar system when compared to the planets, making it the largest moon in the solar system. Ganymede is mostly made up of water ice, and this aspect of the moon's composition provides significant insights on how the other 79 moons of Jupiter have developed since their origin. That concludes today's video. We sincerely hope you have found the video entertaining. Please leave any questions or comments below. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to view more of our amazing videos.